Puja, my friends, there are severe stresses in the silver markets. There are stresses in the global economy. We haven't talked about this today, but the electricity issue continues to be a serious problem in Europe. We've seen a record collapse in net worth that has never been seen before, not even during the lockdown quarter of 2020. And sooner or later, the Fed is going to pivot for one last time. And the silver markets have been wacky in ways that they've never been before. And rather than just state superlatives like that, I'll show you some very strange numbers that have never occurred before in the silver paper markets, but that are occurring now in conjunction with records in the physical markets. And so while we don't see much movement in the spot price just yet, there are a lot of things boiling under the surface. What we are seeing essentially is very high short interest in the SLV paper silver ETF. At the same time, the same parties that are short the SLV ETF are long futures net for the first time since I believe 2018, which is a very rare situation. Why would you be short SLV but long silver futures? I think I can explain it. Second, the Fed is about to move from about $45 billion in quantitative tightening per month to about $95 billion in quantitative tightening per month. And this is as long-term rates continue to rise and short-term rates even faster. So who is going to buy all the bonds that the Fed is selling? Santa, maybe. This quarter saw an all-time record reduction in net worth of households as price inflation continues to rage on, which means this my friends. I can't give you a date when the markets, the silver and gold markets are going to turn around, but I can give you a trigger. And that is when the Fed is forced to make its final pivot. The move into precious metals will be a sight to see. Exactly when that happens will be when the banking system forces it because either they bring rates back down to zero immediately or the entire banking structure that they have built up since 1971 falls and disintegrates, and you know what they're going to choose. The banking system, as a result, will be saved in dollar terms. However, the dollar will not be able to buy much of anything once they are all bailed out for the last time. So I wish nominal health to the banking system. May you be able to buy and sell dollars at your leisure and at your heart's content while the real economy is denominated in gold and silver ounces. Overall, the first gold pour out of this mine is scheduled for mid-2023 and considering the increase of prices that have been ongoing for a year and a half, two years now, it's pretty impressive that Fortune has been able to keep this project in budget and able to keep their costs in line despite the inflationary environment. This is a chart I got from apparently chartexchange.com you can see in the top right corner there i don't know what these translucent little bars are except this line here this candle line shows the cost to borrow slv shares which was pretty constant from june to about late august 2022 but then all of a sudden starting in september the cost to borrow an slv share rose to about seven percent and that is where it has stayed ever since that means the demand to borrow SLV to short it is at a high. Who is doing that? What is going on? Why is silver being shorted? Why is SLV specifically being shorted now when the price is already so low? This chart of SLV holdings gives a little bit of a clue. See, when silver falls, when the price falls, the supply of silver in SLV tends to fall along with it not one for one, but there is a tendency for silver to be redeemed from the SLV fund when the price of silver falls. And that is to keep the SLV fund and the futures price tagged, pegged together. When silver falls, the idea is that the authorized participants in SLV buy the shares that are sold and they redeem them 
for silver, take silver out of the fund. So there's less silver in the funds so of each share is worth comparatively more as the supply of silver falls. And they tweak it every day to make sure that the SLV fund and the futures price is pretty much in line. They've been able to redeem maybe about 4,000 tons since 2022. So that has been relatively successful. But as you see here, the black line, the tendency of SLV is to always rise in terms of its holdings. And this slaughter of silver since the beginning of 2022 has brought down the silver holdings SLV, but really not by much. And cumulatively, certainly the trend line since the fund's founding is still up. We see here since 2011, when the uh, holdings were about 12,000 tons and until Let's see the March 2020 bottom. It was about the same. It, this is about the same level as that. So the, the fund didn't really move at all from $50 to about $11. And all of a sudden in 2020, it skyrocketed. And here is the peak at Silver Squeeze. The Silver Squeeze peak at around 21,000 tons. So there has been some redemption, but not much. Now, why would, who are the ones that short SLV? They are the bullion banks that are in charge of SLV. And now there's something else about the bullion banks that you should know. And that is that the silver cots, the commitment of traders, are all totally whacked out. You see here, the red line here, this is producers. It is positive for the first time since, I think, 2019. These were the only times back here when the producers were net long, meaning above the zero line. This line, which is constantly below zero, almost constantly, is barely ever above the zero mark. It is again in the last time that it was above the zero. You have silver bottoming out here. It was a, wasn't a short-term process, but it wouldn't take that long either. It bottomed out for about eh, nine months, it looks like. Here we can zoom into the individual shorters. One is producers. They have a record low amount of shorts, record low. And in terms of net, they are net long. So this does not take into account their longs, but they are net short only 25,000 contracts. These are the producers of silver. It has never been this low. They are not hedging at all. And now this is an inverted chart. It is silver futures swap dealers, which is the bullion bank, the short positions minus the long position. So if it's negative, then you have a net long position. The bullion banks, therefore, are net long silver on the futures market, about 21,787 contracts. They're net long. So then why are they shorting SLV? It's like this. There is silver available on the COMEX. However, we have seen that the supply of registered silver has fallen hard since silver squeeze over 100 million ounces. And so the free float of silver on the COMEX is falling. And so if the bullion banks that are in charge of SLV take more silver from the COMEX, they risk, they risk draining the COMEX of registered supply. So where else can you get physical silver without draining the physical supply on the COMEX? You can get it from London, where almost all of the SLV bullion is held. And how do you get silver out of SLV? Out of London, you pull down the silver price, people sell their SLV at a discount, you take those into a basket and you redeem the baskets if you're an authorized participant to do that, and then you can get physical silver from there. At which point you can take that physical silver and sell it to the bullion markets, which are going for a 30 to 40% premium on almost all coins. And how do you prevent a short squeeze on yourself or how do you prevent bankruptcy on yourself by massively shorting SLV when SLV is already so low? You go long the silver futures contract to hedge yourself, which is why the bullion banks are now net long on the silver futures contract, but massively short on SLV. It makes sense. It protects them. And what it means is that physical silver will continue to drain either out of the ETF. But if silver prices reverse and the ETF starts to climb again. And the only way they can get physical silver is to continue to drain the COMEX and LBMA without draining the ETFs, which is dangerous for the free floating silver supply. Okay. So since 2011, we have here this rectangle I drew in. 2011, this is the silver spike to 50. Here you can see there's two lines here. There's that light gray line, which is the spot price and the dark blue line, which is the physical price. You can see here, this is the only time when the gray line overtakes the blue line, you have a negative premium. That doesn't even make sense. You can't have a negative premium, but it, physical silver was actually cheaper here 
than paper silver. So here, back in 2011, during that spike to 50, there was zero demand for physical silver above paper silver. It didn't even exist. And in 2013, I wrote here a lag spike. You have a falling spot price, except why do you have a declining premium here? Simply because it's a lag. The physical silver markets, they don't adjust their prices as quickly as the spot market does, which addresses prices every second. The physical price cannot be adjusted in that way so quickly. So there's always a lag between when the spot price falls and when the physical price falls. And that spike at the premium here shows that lag. You have the same thing at bear market bottom in the gold and silver markets at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. You had a falling silver price, but the physical markets didn't fall as fast. So you had a spike, which eventually abated here for looks like four years until you get to 2020. And then you have a true monetary panic over here during the COVID awakening, I would call it. And then as the spot price climbed back up, the premium collapsed to about three, four percent. And over here is silver squeeze. And since then, the premium has climbed from three, from about three, 2.5, three percent to now 37 percent. It hit a, a high of 40 percent and the spot price is Recovered a little bit since then, but not much. We're still at 37%. So you have these humongous premiums that are in the physical markets that the bullion banks are trying to satisfy and take advantage of without taking more physical silver out of the LBMA. And they want to do it from the ETF because that won't affect the float supply. And that is why I believe they are short SLV and long silver futures. And so the point being here, how is this premium spike different from all other premium spikes? Well, these were either brief monetary crises or a lag in the physical markets that was not expressing in the spot markets. But now I think this, from silver squeeze to now, signifies real physical demand, which is what is inspiring the bullion banks to go short SLV to redeem that silver and send it to the bullion markets. Conclusion, my friends, there are severe stresses in the silver markets. There are stresses and the global economy. We haven't talked about this today, but the electricity issue continues to be a serious problem in Europe. We've seen a record collapse in net worth that has never been seen before, not even during the lockdown quarter of 2020. And sooner or later, the Fed is going to pivot for one last time.